I got asked this question recently where someone was wondering what tools they could use in the charm ecosystem to glamorize an existing CLI. There's a few different ways that you can do this. We have a lot of different libraries that fulfill a lot of different gaps. So let me get into it today. One of the easiest changes that you can make is using the Lip Gloss Library. Lip Gloss is a library responsible for layouts and styling. So if you wanna have a bunch of different elements showing up side by side or vertically, you can do that with Lip Gloss. You can also add different colors, both foreground and background colors, and a bunch of other styles. So if you have any outputs that are happening in your CLI program, you can stylize some of those outputs with lip gloss, just text styling for terminal applications. Very similar to what CSS is to HTML. Another option is using log. It's just a wrapper for Go's official logger, but it provides you with some nice styling out of the box. So you can use that for any errors or debugging or any kind of info that you might need printed. It'll make it look all nicely formatted, like right out of the box. So that one would be a good option if you're looking to improve maybe some of your error messages or readability in general with your command line application. If you wanna be real extra, you can go with a TUI. So a TUI stands for text UI, and we've got a few different ways that you can do that. The smallest lift for this would probably be huh or bubbles. So huh is a library and or standalone application, kinda depends how you wanna work with it. You can, you can see the readme to see examples on how it gets used there. Huh is for generating forms. So it gives you access to multi-select, single select choices. You can also get a single line text input or a multi-line text input. All of those components are easily accessible with Huh and they come pre-styled and all of that stuff. So it's really, really straightforward to use. So you might have a subcommand or a flag that triggers a form to pop up and you could use Huh for that. Bubbles as you may or may not know, is our library for interactive UI components. So these are typically built as like little building blocks. Think of them like little Legos for bubble tea or the pearls in bubble tea, if you wanna stick with the, the lingo there, okay? Bubble tea is a two-way framework, meaning that there is an interface that you can implement and that is then a model and then you're able to dictate when you have this TUI open, what every single key press is gonna do and what actions get triggered. That is pretty much what Bubble Tea does. Bubbles helps support Bubble Tea, but you can actually use bubbles on their own. So things like a list or a table or multi-line text input or a single line text input, like even huh is a wrapper over the bubbles components. And gum, if you use, if you've seen that, which is like adding interactivity to bash scripts, that is another layer over bubbles. You can actually use a bubble component on its own and just use whatever built-in functionality that bubble supports. If you don't want to add the additional layer of complexity that comes with creating your own custom bubble tea model, and how you do that is essentially just using your program.run. And when you're creating the program, you're initializing that with the bubble, the bubbles component as the model that you're passing to the program instead of where you would normally put a custom model. I'll try and explain this with like visuals or something <laughs> in case it's not immediately obvious what I'm trying to say. Those are your three options. You can use huh if you want something kind of form related with one of your subcommands or flags to trigger that TUI. You could also use a bubbles component. So if you just wanna show data in a list that they can then scroll through or interact with in some way, then you can do that. Note that if you wanna have a table that you, they don't necessarily need to interact with, we do support that in lip gloss. And bubble tea is for if you want a TUI that has a bit more custom functionality that is beyond the scope of what is covered in a bubble. You can still use the bubbles within Bubble Tea and just you pass the messages along to the bubbles, but using Bubble Tea will allow you to get a lot more custom functionality in there 
beyond what is offered in Haunt and Bubbles. If you're including Markdown at any point in your CLIs, like maybe printing a Markdown file or reading it or anything like that, you could use Glamour to render the Markdown. So if you've seen Glow, that is for reading Markdown files in your terminal, that one's an actual app, so it's got additional functionality with it. But Glamour is the actual Markdown rendering library that's used with Glow. So when you're looking and it's like all nicely styled and everything, that's actually Glamour. So what you can do is use Glamour to render whatever markdown outputs you might want to have in your application, whatever, whatever that might look like for you. Finally, there is no good project without a good readme, okay? Docs are important and you can and will produce GIFs in your readmes. And an easy way to do that is with VHS. You can use VHS to programmatically generate GIFs. I love it because it means I can work smarter, not harder, okay? makes it way easier for me to even create content for stuff like this. You might see some different uh, demos and whatnot in this video, and that I probably produced with VHS. One of my favorite ways to use VHS is by using VHS Record. So the first step is that I'll use VHS Record. That opens up a new little shell session, and from there I can start to emulate the behavior that I want to record. So this might be opening up some kind of terminal application, navigating a couple pages, and then closing it out. Once I'm done recording, I can just hit Control D, it kills the process, and then all of my keystrokes will get extracted into a tape file. And that .tape file is every single action that happened during that recording. Within that file, you can also specify what kind of output name you want, the height and width, the font size, everything. So what's really nice is that you don't even really need to record things or re-record things, which we all know is the painful part. <laughs> what you can do here is if you had any typos or you decide that you need that demo for vertical, not horizontal or whatever. We know TikTok killed all of the good formats for us developers, okay? Vertical video is the bane of my existence. But I can now just adjust my tape file to the vertical resolution and then send that to VHS and it will export that into whatever file format I've decided, whether that is an MP4, a MOV, a GIF, and you can embed that in your readmes or whatever videos you might have demonstrating your products. We love that. I hope this helps to answer your question about ways that you can integrate different charm libraries into an existing CLI application. Let me know what you think in the comments. We'll see you in the next video. You can click here for a cool VHS video because VHS was given some love or whatever else I decide to put here. But you gotta click it, otherwise you're banned.